point. I think the movie studios recognize that they have to be careful in terms of what's going out there, what's out in the face of a, 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 a community, a public that is still raw and hurt over this. Yeah, you think about, though, how far the envelope has been pushed in the last 30 years in terms of what our young people in our society is exposed to through television and through film. Um, it, it is beyond me as to how that is a free expression to make that accessible to, to kids, the amount of violence that is you know, available for them to see. And then their, um, our kids are being programmed to find this kind of violence normal because they see it on, on TV and in the mm. film. Mm. What's interesting is that the actual amount of gun violence, apparently from 1990 to 2013 in this big study that was done, is actually down. But what you do see is that there's a high rate with these mass shooters of fatherlessness, uh, and you have to really wonder if we've got the right role models, the, the whole idea of defending the weak and uh, the idea of what it means to be a good and upstanding citizen being really articulated and taught and ex with clarity about if you're a free society, that actually requires more responsibility on the culture, on the families, on the individual citizens to behave in particular ways that earn that freedom and deserve that freedom. And we sort of have gotten into this sort of license mentality. And you have to wonder, as you were saying, some of the video games that you see, the woman who posted about how the shooting was deserved had also worked for one of the companies that makes the video games that are just so so heinous mm. in, in terms of the whole attitude that they have. Right, and I think it's something that the video game companies and the movie studios need to think about before they even go into production of any things like this and probably consider who they are hiring to develop these things. Yeah.